What's up fellow gamers? It's Ventures here and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be getting into a exciting guide for a game called Meeting Year Zero. We're going to be talking about our main man Borman here. So sit back, relax, get your pen, notepad, and your thinking caps on as we get further and dig deep into this guide here. Let's get into it. Okay guys, so today we're going to be doing a Mutant Year Zero guide and we'll be talking about our main man, Borman. Borman, who is the pig of the team, his basic main goal is to be a tank. And before we get started with that, I'd like to ask you guys to please leave a like on the video if you want to see more videos like this for more guides, tips and tricks, and just more gameplay of a Mutant Year Zero. Uh, as it'll help the channel and allow me to be able to know that you guys want to see more content like this So let's get into the guide Borman. What is Borman exactly as far as his role on the team? Well Borman is the quintessential tank Borman is made to be able to go out in the middle of the battlefield front line dish damage and take damage while mitigating that damage to help with his survivability he has great skills and passes that will allow him to be able to do those things and be very effective at it if used properly. So what we're going to do is take a look at his stats, his mutations, and his passives so that way we can better understand how Borman works. So if we look at his skill tree here, as you may say, you look at the stats. Let's go here first. You might notice there is a reoccurring trend. You notice that here on the stats, you have health booster, permanently increased health by 1 HP. You notice unlike any other character in the game, he has the exact same stat tree of the same skill all the way up and down it. So that tells you that Borman is basically made to be a high health, tanky type of character. He's going to have probably the biggest health pool in the game and he's going to have more health than most of your other characters once you level him up. And that's what you want to do. You want to get him as much HP as possible so he can be able to absorb as much damage and have more survivability as he sits on the front lines and creates those uh, opportunities for your teams to succeed. So, now we're going to get into the mutations. Let's start by going down the list. We have Run and Gun. So, Run and Gun says, enables an action after sprinting. What does that mean? Well, Run and Gun allows you to be able to sprint which means that you'll be able to make movements with your two action points within the orange outline area and get into an area there if you have the opportunity to shoot an enemy you will be able to now shoot an enemy after sprinting by using this skill normally you will lose your action points and it will turn over to either your teammates turn or the enemy's turn if he is the last person to actually uh, use the attacks but with run and gun you can actually sprint take a shot at the enemy and be able to get that shot off so that is basically run and gun skill next we're going to look at joker joker draws enemy attention to yourself for one turn that's self-explanatory you activate joker uh, and what happens once the enemy's turn uh, becomes available, they will draw their attention towards Borman and away from your other teammates. Being that he's kind of a tank, this is a good skill to have. Basically be able to uh, divert the enemy attention over to Borman so that way he can take that damage for your team. Next we're going to look at Hog Rush. Hog Rush which is a major mutation says you can destroy covers knock out enemies for two turns before I get into what hog rush does let me just mention that if you are new to the game and most likely you are you want to try your best to get this mutation first and we'll explain why hog rush basically allows you to pick an enemy on the map and if he's within a, your normal uh, walking distance or sprint distance you can highlight that enemy and hit him and knock the enemy out onto the ground for two enemy turns this is very important especially early game 
uh, hog rush will allow you to be able to use in stealth positions hog rush will allow you to take out most of the uh, high level enemies without them being able to attack and if you use properly and within a actual walk dance this hog rush will allow you to also be able to be used in one action point and shoot the enemy uh, at, the, at the same same time with the second action point so it's very very useful again because of that good actual variety of uh, skills that hog rush actually has you definitely want to get that early on as you start the game so very very important skill one of the best skills for Borman going to this next skill is twitch shot twitch shot allows you to fire two using only one AP while losing 25% accuracy so twitch fire is basically your actual fire action which normally would take two actual action points well twitch shot will allow you to use one action point when you shoot what it does is allows you to make one action point to uh, do a particular action like move reload something of that nature and then when you get ready to shoot with the last action point normally it takes two action points you'll be able to shoot with one but what happens is that you shoot two times out of a weapon now you want to take note that this does not work with single shot weapons like sniper rifles, crossbows, or anything that has one ammo inside the gun. You will need a gun that at least has two ammo to use twitch shot or it will not work. So that is definitely something to uh, look at when you get ready to use that skill. The next skill is this corpse eater which is also a major mutation. It says eat organic corpses to restore HP. This is very good. Uh, corpse Eater will basically allow you to go up to an enemy if he's within walk or sprint range go over to his body and literally eat the body yes it sounds gross but it's very very helpful this basically will usually restore most if not all of Borman's health and most importantly using this skill it does not use any action points whatsoever so you can use this skill eat a body get health back and still have two action points to use once it's done so it's a good skill for survivability for Borman and you want to use that if you can avoid using health kits the next skill stone skin which is a major mutation you are invincible for one turn so stone skin will allow you to basically turn your skin basically to stone now this just like corpse eater does not use any action points so that is one of the benefits of this meaning that you can use stone skin and still have two action points to either get closer into the battle or you can just be able to shoot guys and know that when their turn comes they cannot retaliate so how does it work well his skin turns to stone when the enemy's turn is there he is impenetrable to pretty much all attacks it doesn't matter if it's a shot it doesn't matter if it's a molotov uh, it doesn't matter if it's you know explosives it doesn't matter he is impenetrable to those um, actual shots and abilities that people used against Borman he's impenetrable the one thing I have not have figured out is whether he is actually impenetrable to a mastermind or like one of the brothers or, or actual high priestess when it comes to mind control so someone knows down in the comments can like the actually leave a comment and let me know I've yet to test that but I will probably leave a comment and let you know if that it works that way so the next skill spore cloud which is one of his passives and smoke emits when you take damage this is essentially what it is smoke basically emits from Borman when he gets shot or he gets usually hit with uh, mainly a shot so if you if he gets shot by an enemy and he doesn't die or even if he does die there is a cloud of smoke very similar to a smoke bomb that gets thrown on Borman which basically em emits around his body. The good thing about that is if you know uh, smoke or smoke bomb protects you from basically incoming damage because the enemy does not have line of sight. So this is a passive skill that if you have on, Borman can be shot once and basically not take any damage. Uh, after that because he is now covered in a cloud of smoke which leaves you to be able to do things like heal uh, reload or just give you some time to be able to figure out what your next move is with Borman. It's a very good skill and very good passive to use. 
And last but not least is Eagle Eye, which is another pass. So, so Eagle Eye gives you an extra 25% weapon range. So it's basically explanatory. He will basically get 25% of a weapon range, one fourth of an absolute weapon range. So for example, if you have a gun that does, let's say 10 weapon range, he gets one fourth of that, uh, which is basically 2.5. Or if you want to go an even number just for math's sake, if it does uh, eight damage, you get two, I'm just gonna be eight range, you get two actual range points added onto it. So it's self-explanatory that does help if he needs to shoot someone who is a little bit out of range but eagle eye is a good skill to have so there you have it guys you have all the skills of borman and what borman does so getting on to next to it we're going to go into his inventory and i'll show you how i would like to kit him up as far as with his actual uh build and his equipment all right guys, so here we have Borman here and we have him all equipped and we have all his weapons added onto him. With Borman being on the actual front lines, he doesn't have any skills that really help increase a whole lot of range other than the main passive. So he's not gonna get high crit for being in high ground. He's not gonna get a lot of crit being hidden. So he's gonna be up in someone's face blowing someone's face off so you basically want to have him with some really high power weapons so for here i have the my mirror uh, pc 98 and i have him with the boomstick now you can add any weapon that you want uh with Borman, but i prefer high power weapons up close and personal weapons that will allow you to do some definite damage uh, what I have equipped with is the Explorer Helm. The wearer is immune to critical hits. You want him immune to critical hits because if he's going to be on the front line, he's taking damage. You want him to be able to mitigate that damage as a tank. So you want him to be able to uh, not take that extra critical damage uh, if he is shot. Also, I have the M M Mimir Zero G8. Now, this is a close to in game type of armor. I'll leave a link to the description below to a wiki that will allow you to be able to know where to find some of these items but this armor is, is one of the best armors as far as the HP in the game this is a uh, gives you a immune to charge attacks this is very very critical as a tank so with this type of armor this allows Borman to be able to take charge attacks meaning that other tanks if they were to use a charge attack against you Borman is immune to that attack a tank will hit you and fall right down to the ground this is also very good against uh, some of the uh, zone dogs. Zone dogs go to attack you in charge and they go to attack and he will absorb that damage. With these two items here, I can absorb damage from all zone dogs and pretty much fight without taking damage strictly alone by Borman by himself. And tanks cannot knock me down uh, through their tank charge. So this makes him very much a tanky type of guy and I believe this is one of the best kits that you can go on Borman. Again, use what you feel like you want the best, but you want something very similar to this, uh, you know, in the in the in-game type of uh, play that you have with Borman. So we're gonna basically talk about now how best to use Borman. I mean, Borman has all these great tanky type of skills. How best to use them? Well, as I explained, he is a tank. You want him to basically be on low ground you want him to be in front of people's faces. You want him to take most of that damage. And you want to be able to have high power stuff. The ways I like to play Borman is basically having a two man uh, high ground, Borman one man low ground. So Borman's kind of in the middle, shooting off guys on the on the low ground. I have someone like maybe Ducks, maybe someone like Selma, who's up top, who will basically shoot some of the other enemies and use the, uh, the skills that they have for their crit and their off ground kind of uh, damage boost to be able to take some of the guys out Borman can be down there shooting these guys taking these guys out there he's basically a, a staple member of the team as he can be able to uh, be used for a lot of ground game and a lot of uh, enemies who are higher level who either have low mobility or just really needs to uh, actually draw attention from away from your other team so that way he can get some of those shots off using his twitch shot and using his uh, corpse eater to stay alive and get some survivability. So that's the way I would use Borman if I were a new newcomer and basically throughout all the way to end game. 
so there you have it guys that is my Borman guide on uh, how I would best use Borman and how best you should probably use Borman do you have any other tips or tricks that you would like to mention that I may have forgot leave it in the comment section down below and as always thank you for watching and remember always keep that flame going for gaming peace out guys and we see you in the next one